it's a new moon in the sign of Aquarius and what I'm going to do is run through a few charts with you this is my chart that we're beginning with let me see right share we're going to look at solar fire as well and we're also going to look at astro hyphen seek and I'm going to show you what's going on in that chart so that you get different views this is my chart so when we look at the moon and what we're looking for is the transit so if you can see here this is today which is the 21st of January and if I get the pointer here you can see that we have a the moon and the sun are in my second house and that will define that's about my needs and values so it's a new moon in that area so if we then look that what you can see is that pluto when we look at the astro seek you'll get more understanding this is because this is the transits on the outside of my chart and on the inside there's my rising sign so it's going to fall in different houses for all of us depending on where we what our rising sign is so let me make sure i've got my sound up really high so let's see bringing it down a bit so what we would do is that um we begin to look at the moon here it's the moon when it's a new moon it's always conjunct and when it's a full moon the moon is opposite the sun but you can see that pluto going on there so with the transits for me and i'm going to show you the chart but this is educating us on our own chart how you would look at it so i do have the sun is trying my sun at the moment which is quite nice so if you look at the sun here my sun is zero degrees of gemini so i've got a nice trying going on there with the moon and the sun there's some dip, the, i've got some trioctiles and a trioctile and tr octiles which are different degrees and also um the moon is quintile to my neptune so if you look here the moon and the sun neptune up here so quintile that's a nice spiritual type of energy and then trines are easy energy and the octiles um you've got like 45 degrees you've got semi squares you've got all of these different aspects going on but we're looking at the sun and the moon in this case and we do know that the the ruler of the new moon is Aquarius and um, it's Aquarius so it's Uranus and Uranus is going direct tomorrow which is really interesting that this is going on here and then also that Pluto will be going into in March Pluto will do its first move into the sign of Aquarius so what I'm going to do now is share the other chart so let me show you here this is astro seek that I'm going to show you now here okay so this is the chart of the today um and literally within the last 10 minutes we've had our new moon and you can see it's one degree 32 here so you, you would look for where this is on your own chart we've got uranus here which is with the north node which will be going direct I will say that um, what's interesting, there is a few aspects here that I will go through. I've got a book that I'll show you. This is um, Brilliant on Aspects. It's Robert Pellier. I don't know how we pronounce that. Pelletier, I believe. There you go. I'll put the link to this book below because what I'm going to do when I go over to solar fire i'm going to read some of these aspects and particularly this aspect with mercury to the sign of mars which they're both exact at the moment you can see eight degrees and eight degrees up here and i do believe that that is an inconjunct but i may need to double check that a new phase a new moon is an initiation it's beginning it's the beginning of a cycle and our action 
is instinctual. It's absolute freedom is required. The question is, who am I? The action one takes brings feedback. So whatever action we take, whatever action we take in life, it, we will get feedback from our actions. This is how it works, this human being thing. This is how it works. And we've got, if I'm looking at human design, it's very interesting what they say about the moon. Um, in human design, the moon represents what moves us, the driving force in our design. The pull of the moon is a force that is powerful and always there. And the moon is, you know, you see it affects the tides on earth and such like, and always willing to embody the message of our soul's energy. So the moon is that, it's the energy of our soul. So wherever your moon is in your chart, mine is in Gemini at 17 degrees, and it's in my seventh house. So the way my soul, what it desires and needs in order to be fulfilled and what makes me feel comfortable, we can begin to see how that plays out. The input comes from the sun and the moon, and we know that because without the sun, the moon would not have any light. So they are heavily connected, clearly, that the reason we see the moon is because of the sun. No sun, we wouldn't see the moon as we do. But the directions of our force or driver is represented by the moon. The moon is the archetype of the eldest daughter and makes possible the task of Earth Mother to drive and move the form, thus ensuring evolution. The moon is also reflected light that others see in our inner nature, brought to the surface and placed on display. So it's a new moon. And the new moon is in Aquarius. So this is from Astro Seat that I'm going to read this. It says your relationship with your emotions can be complicated. You want to free yourself from negative emotions such as fear and anger and jealousy, but it can lead to the fact that others will expect you to be incredibly tolerant when they display such emotions. You may have the tendency to create the greatest possible distance from your natural instincts and emotions. So we may not be as impulsive. You know, we don't really want to be with this Aquarius moon. We want to you know, hold back, and we will naturally hold back our emotions and instincts a little bit. But the situation which you are, we unconsciously get ourselves into forces us to accept the reality. You have the ability to be an impartial observer of life. This is the great thing about Aquarius and um, the, in fact, three of my friends have Aquarius moon. It's quite interesting when you begin to see who we interact with and where their moon is as well. And um, it says it gives us the ability to be good psychologists. When we are able to be the observer, the impartial observer, we can we can be more of a psychologist in these matters of what's going on. And we're able to give people useful and impartial advice. In relationships, we can tend to attract indifferent, unpredictable or unrivaled partners. It is important for us that there is friendship between between ourselves and our lovers, this is what it says. It says we have a strong need for a freedom of expression and this can cause moodiness and unpredictability because the, that Uranian energy um, is basically breaking free of limitations. So it is where we want to break free, we want freedom of expression and you know that can cause moodiness and unpredictability because we've, we're dealing with other people. We can, can be happy in the company of other people. And um, when we're in group, it's easier to understand your feelings and get rid of the fear of intimate situations. And that's true, isn't it? When we're in groups of people, it's less, we take away the intimacy. It's not so one-to-one. -one. Then we have that the 11th house rules our friendships um, with our closest. So the 11th house, which would be also 11th house. Traditionally, up here, you see Aquarius and uranian energy and also saturn comes into this into play there as well the north node is conjunct to uranus at the moment and we've got mercury in conjunct i believe to that mars and then we've got what else is going on here we've got the opposition to lilith which not everybody takes into account but i do like lilith she is basically true lilith is the resolution asteroid lilith is more to do with the garden of eden type the mythology and the 
Lilith here is true. You see it's got a little T there. So that, that stands for true Lilith. And true Lilith enables us to come to resolution and mature, which is really important. The key words that this is why we're here. And actually, I was what reading up earlier on the prefrontal cortex and understanding how the pain body, um, not just the emotional stuff, but the the pain when we have physical pain. And I was with a physiotherapist yesterday and she was explaining to me how the nervous system works and how the we can experience pain. But if we talk to our pain and we have compassion for our pain, like if it's longstanding pain, how we, when we basically get to a place of peace, we don't, the pain is not so bad. You know, it's like almost not being in fight, flight, freeze, because when we're in the fight, flight, freeze response, often, uh, or if we've been had trauma and we live in a hypervigilant way due to early childhood trauma or any trauma, even as an adult that could have made us hypervigilant, then what can happen is, is that our nervous system and also the foods we eat as well can affect our nervous system, which can cause pain in the body. So it's quite interesting. The prefrontal cortex doesn't fully develop until the age of 25. And that it got me thinking today how we suffer traumas, we hold on to them, or they don't really come to light to after a particular age, and how there's part of us that's not fully developed, even up to the age of maybe 25 into the Saturn return. Also, with the spine, which is, I learned about last month, the bottom of the spine where we have the tailbone that does not fuse, that part, that area there does not fuse until we're around 30, which again is our Saturn return, which I found incredible that that works in alignment with, you know, the rings around Saturn and maturing, um, because Saturn takes 29 to 30 years to go around the chart. So there's Saturn at the moment, it's at 24 degrees of Aquarius. So mythology, astrology, this is a snapshot of the heavens right at the point of the new moon and how we get affected by new moons and full moon, full moons, culmination, and a new moon is, you know, starting seeds, planting seeds. The sun conjunct the moon brings considerable individualism. The emotions and feelings of the moon are in harmony with the ego identity and individuality of the sun and they can make each other more profound so if somebody's born with a full moon this is more to the point of not a full moon a new moon this is more to the point the sun is trying to mars but i will skip over to solar fire because i can push the chart forward so you can see here the sun and the moon same degree mercury is in capricorn up here eight degrees Venus is 23 degrees of Aquarius also, you see here, but it's conjunct Saturn, and that can be feel a bit hard um, for, for the collective. It can be a bit difficult. I'll explain why when I read from the book that I've got here. Jupiter is in Aries there. Oh, sorry, Mars. Mars is in Gemini. And that, remember, that just went direct within the last week. It went direct. It was retrograde. It's going to be in Gemini until the end of March. And we've also got the south node is in Scorpio, north node, nine degrees. So it's amazing that that's going to, it's coming up to a year and a half, and then it will move into the sign of Aries. So that's a whole new cycle we're going into. We've also got Pluto and conjunct. That's the other big conjunction there that we have at the moment. So we've got Venus on top of Saturn, Pluto, Moon, Sun, all conjunct here. And we can see that all of that there is opposing true Lilith. So other aspects. We've got Sun trying Mars. So the sun is trying to Mars. So I'll show you that just the sun is here and it's trying down here to Mars. 
and it's applying so another seven degrees it's moving on in you see it's one degree so that's seven days and then also mars is moving slower slowly as well not slower sun sextile jupiter sun conjunct pluto conjunction is deeply acting aspect and may bring an unexpected significant changes so we can see what's you know what that means to the collective as well particularly with that aspect here we've got the pluto conjunct and sun conjunct pluto so it's where there, it may bring unexpected and significant changes now when we consider that that's aquarius the moon we consider that Pluto's going to be moving on in, in March. And then we take into account that Uranus is responsible or the ruler of that moon and the sun at the moment and Saturn and Venus, which is our inner needs. And Saturn, Venus is our inner needs. Saturn is our, to do with our restriction and it's to do with our maturity, to do with our bones, our teeth, um, our structure. The moon is trying Mars also, so we've got that nice trine going on to Mars to move forward. And it's in the sign of Gemini. So that's communication we're talking about here and short journeys. And the 11th house is groups as well, but it's also where we individuate in Aquarius as well. So we observe when we individuate, we become, in, in individuation, we become the observer. The moon is sextile Jupiter, Mars conjunct, sorry, moon conjunct Pluto. I'll read that to you. So this aspect causes unnecessary stubbornness in conflicts with loved ones. These people do not like making compromises. So it's like where we don't want to compromise. And it may be difficult to get along with each other. It's where we can hide our true feelings and have emotional outbursts. And it's often made to make radical changes even in matters important they often so it's deciding to make radical changes so again you know that's going to go direct what i'm going to do is go over to solar fire new share okay so this is the emanated page let me see spotlight and if i can move this a bit here All right so you can see the Oops, a daisy. That's it. Make sure I'm sharing the right page. So, no, I don't want to stop share. I want to go new share to make sure you can see it. So, so you can see here a bit clearer. This is the 21st of January, January 21st. And you can see here that you've got the same chart, but it looks a bit different to Astro hyphen seek but you do go to their page and put your details in it's a brilliant site if we look at Aquarius keywords and this is the list from evolutionary astrology but it's pretty standard Aquarius keywords are liberation from conditioning our individuality our individuation it's rebellion it's like-minded groups so do remember this is Uranian here up there Aquarius and Uranus here. Like-minded groups, it's group hysteria, secret societies, alienation, hopes and dreams and ideals, long-term memory. So long-term memory, if we believe in past lives, then we can go back as far as that. It's the anarchists, the tribe, community, fragmentation, it's trauma. So when that Pluto moves into Aquarius and it will it will then retrograde back actually to this year, back into, I think it gets to one degree and then it retrogrades back into Capricorn. And then it does it again. And then it will, when it moves in, I think, I haven't, well, have a look actually. I'll push the calendar, this um, chart forward, not calendar. We've got um, trauma, mass trauma, splitting, unique, shocking projection, hyperactivity, Prometheus in the mythology revolutionary, it's what we can feel ostracized, cast out, it's the astral plane, telepathic and objective awareness. So this, if we take into what those words that I've just said there, you take Pluto into Aquarius, and this is what we're really looking at ultimately. 
um, the fracturing of society, which has been going on the last couple of years through the lockdowns and various other things that were going on. We can see the symbolism in astrology. When you, when we look at a chart, it's a language. It, it's not magic. It, what we're doing is, is that through hundreds and hundreds of years, I mean, I you know, I don't know the history exactly, but through millennia, people have put data into the stars. So people would have looked at the planets and they've said that Mars means this and the ruler of Mars is, um, or that Mars rules Aries, you know, Uranus rules Aquarius. Um, we've got Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. Venus is the ruler of Taurus and Libra. And the sun is the ruler of Leo. And the moon is Cancer. So it goes very deep that it's like we put in the data and then astrologers, what we're doing is when we learn astrology is that we're, we've understood by reading the archetypes and the definitions and then all of the aspects. I know this looks completely crazy in the middle of here, but the I've got a lot of aspects on there. This is why to simplify, if I just go back to a new share and show you to simplify this. If we go back to this chart, you can see there's a lot less lines going on here. And the lines are aspects, the way the planets are speaking to each other. So we can see what the trine is, the semi-sextile, sextiles, and um, inconjuncts. And I just want to check that that... You see there that Mercury, if we look at the degrees, we'd be counting the degrees from one to the other. That's what we would be doing. So as an example, you know, this is a lesson. This may give you an idea. So 30 degrees a house, we know, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if I get my calculator... So this is how, you know, I learned, I had to sit here and I didn't do it, you know, I, I just got drawn into it. So that's 120. So if you go one, two, three, four, that's four times 30. Then we got eight here, okay? And then up here, you can see that we've got another house, which is 30. So if I add 30 and then I minus eight, that's 150 degrees apart. And 150 degree angle is an inconjunct and inconjuncts are difficult to not understand you know you have to read them and understand them but even when you do it there's the clarity on it because there's so much other stuff going on here but i'll give you a read of that and so you can understand it so if i go back here and i'm going to go to this book and what this is is the aspects you know, I start at the beginning of this book, it's conjunctions, and then it goes on to squares and different aspects. So the aspect is, we're looking at this Mercury up here to this Mars. What does it mean? So Mercury in conjunct Mars. So I'm going to read this out to you. With Mercury in conjunct Mars, what you know is distorted by the way you use it. With You are extremely well-informed in many matters, but lack the judgment to apply this information for best results. After you take on responsibilities that may not be yours, so think about the collective here. We may take on responsibilities that may not be ours. And we complain bitterly that you have no time for us. We complain bitterly that we have no time for ourselves. You want to be approved and considered competent by the people you serve, but oftentimes they are very unappreciative of your efforts. It would be advisable to make a list of the most important priorities in your life and then strike out each one that does not contribute to your own benefit. The remaining ones are the most important priorities which you should apply yourself to so that, you know, write down your priorities and cross out the ones that are not important or of lesser importance. If at any time, if any time is left after satisfying these, then you can conservatively add those 
that benefit others. The reason for this is simple. You persecute yourself by assuming you owe so much to others. It is time to be of service. It is fine, sorry, fine to be of service, but your risk of being exploited by those whom you serve. When this happens, you naturally feel abused and hurt by insensitivity. If you still insist that they need me, you know, what we do, we think people need us, um, seek employment with an organization that exists to satisfy public needs, you know, so that way you get paid for it, yeah? So if you do a job where you're providing public needs, you get paid. In this way, you can get your anxieties off your chest and earn your living at the same time. Social work, welfare programs, medicine, rehabilitation and therapy are some of the fields which would be satisfying to you and helpful to others. Um, you run the risk of physical exhaustion unless you discipline yourself to slow down. So it's saying slow down the nervous system um, because, you know, we need to slow down. It's okay to slow down. So that's interesting because the Mars is like, I want to go for it, I want to go for it. Mercury is our thinking mind and the inconjunct is telling us to slow down a moderate schedule is essential for your own protection and well-being you need to get away from your daily routine and enjoy yourself in recreational activities don't underestimate your own worth when we meet people you tend to we can tend to indulge the one you feel affection for but don't let that person force you to prove your love so we're, we're not you know we we shouldn't have to prove ourselves um ultimately to each other not only will you learn to dislike people that we've got to prove ourselves to you will also hate ourselves for it a hard worker you need someone who shares your desires to succeed who is willing to contribute on an equal for your mutual benefit so the important thing with this is that this is the collective chart you know but this will play out in our own chart so now, if i went back to now Let's go back to this one here. And we're going to go back to, I have to move that in a minute, get rid of this. Spotlight. Okay. Okay. So this is my chart. So where is that happening on my chart? This is that in conjunct. So if I take um, Mercury, my Mars, Mars is transiting in my seventh house, which is the what partnerships and dealing with other people, dealings with others, others. And then the Mercury is in my here of needs. So I'm thinking about, you know, what my values and my needs for myself, inner needs. And then it's an in conjunct with others. So it speaks very loudly when we begin to take that collective chart and impose it on our own which is the current transit on my chart the it, next one that I'm going to look at I'm going to go back to solify but if you see this here this Saturn is conjunct Venus okay so if I go back to new share and I go back to here you can see that we have Saturn, which will cross over, get the spotlight, Saturn, Venus will cross over Saturn. So if I go, let's check days, we got here, so it's 21st, so we'll go, this is minutes here. So if I take that and I go days, so, okay, so if you now see 23 degrees, and we're going by days. One, that's 24 degrees, so it's conjunct tomorrow. And then you see that station there with Uranus, stationed. It's been like that way for about five months. It's going direct, so something's going to give in the collective. It'll be very interesting to see what it is. And because that we have um, the sun on top of Pluto, those two I'm going to read. I'm going to read the... This one here, the Saturn conjunct Venus, and then I'm going to read the Pluto again from this book. So you could treat yourself to a copy because this is the way we learn astrology. We look at the charts. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed how much that I've picked up just by 
picking up charts and keeping on looking and reading as well which is really important and so easy these days like you can just google like if you just googled you know sun conjunct pluto what does it mean you know if you want to go deeper then you want to know what house it's in and all of that that's a a whole different subject but you just keep learning what do the houses mean what does mars mean you know and then what does mars mean in each sign at the moment it's in gemini what does mars in gemini mean what does you start with the moon, if which is quite easy. You know, you could. What does the moon mean in the sign of Aquarius? What does it mean in the sign of Pisces? And um, and what does it mean in the sign of Aries? And then what does it mean in a particular house? So the sun conjunct Pluto. The sun, uh, the conjunction between sun and Pluto indicates that we are extremists. It's um, likes and dislikes are intense, and. At, seen in moderation is difficult so this is interesting isn't it because we've got this acting in moderation is difficult acting in moderation is difficult uranus is going direct we've had a new moon which is a new push forward we've got this saturn on top of venus and saturn on top of each other so that's a bit of a heavy saturn restriction venus is our needs um so um, it's where we have a thing when I talk of this we're talking of the collective yeah so when I say you you have a powerful ego which you assert whenever you can at times you act courageously but other times you show a surprising lack of common sense so we need to show some common sense at this time driven by lust to gain important positions in authority you may resort to pressure tactics against people who stand in your way you may, because a lot of this stuff is in our unconscious, you know, we we become impulsive, we're unconscious, we, we you know, we, we've got a, we're up against our own ego structure and then other people's ego structures. So it's very interesting, you know, it really helps us to understand the mind, our minds. Driven by lust to gain important positions of authority, you may resort to pressure tactic, tactics and then just to prove to others that you are a power to reckon with, you know, so that's ego, isn't it? I'm I'm more powerful than you, you know, governments do it to each other, countries do it to each other, people do it in relationships to each other. This, you know, this is what, how life plays out. Because you are especially sensitive to social conditions, you may make an effort to bring about improved conditions. So that's the other good, that is the upside to that sun conjunct Pluto. When defending those in need or working to correct social injustices, you can truly achieve greatness. So if something's used in a higher octave, then it can be very beautiful. But if it's used in an unconscious manner, then we can cause a lot of problems for ourselves and collectively as well. So in our own chart and then again, where is that happening for us? What house? And you are not tolerant of weakness, either in individuals or in political systems that allow unfair or intolerable human conditions. So we can see right now there's a lot of unfair, intolerable conditions playing out. And we're observers of that and how we individually take that on board or whether we disassociate and pretend it isn't happening or whether we're, you know, it could be that we... You know, that if we're children right now, you know, that the children wouldn't understand any of that. Um, also, if people are, you know, in the later years of their lives, then, you know, they may be being cared for and they wouldn't be aware of what's going on. So and then also mental health issues and all sorts of things, ill health. So, you know, intolerable conditions, not everybody's aware of the intolerable conditions, it takes awareness. And it can be where we're through a tantrum if our, you know, we're rejected. It's where we are a hunter or predator in constant search of prey. So that's Sun Pluto, Sun conjunct Pluto. That is where it's at at the moment. If I look at that, just want to see. Hang on a minute. Right. So that's moving off. So 28 degrees Pluto and then two degrees the sun in Aquarius. So 28, 29, 30, one, two. So that will move off. You know, that's probably, you know, we can safely say that's going on for the next five days or so. Five days, let's give it five days. Then if we take Venus conjunct Saturn, okay? This is what I'm gonna do next. The Venus conjunct Saturn, 
So you see here Venus Saturn. The Venus conjunct Saturn indicates that you feel you must make concessions to others to get what you want. You are always the one who is expected to adjust to the demands of others in order to have a satisfactory relationship. So it's where we may feel that we have to adjust to the demands of others collectively. We're taking this as collective. As a result, we, we are often dissatisfied with the contacts we make either because they are not fulfilling enough or because you feel you are being used. You may become resigned to making the best of the relationship in which you give more than the other person does. On the positive side, however, this shows that you take relationships seriously. So that's maturity. But again, you know, we've got to watch that. It can be where we are loyal and sincere in our affections, but tend to be inhibited in demonstrating them. And it's where we can have reasonably good judgment with this aspect as well. And where we that we can be self-disciplined in handling money, which is quite interesting with what's happening with the CBDC coins and other stuff that's going on financially. We don't know what um, certain powers have up their sleeves, ultimately. You know, the CBDC, everybody would need the internet in order for that to work. That's one thing that has crossed my mind. If you had no internet or you have no mobile phone, then CBDC, it's like Bitcoin. You can't really do Bitcoin without the internet. So I don't know how that's going to play out in reality, this idea, the setup ultimately. So let's see. So it's where we can be serious, sincere and honest, but it's also we can be disturbed, you know, as well with that going on there. So I think that is it um, for today. I think that's, you know, looking at this chart, you know, I know that's happening in my second house. So for me, I'm sure it was, I'm going to look again. Let's see, new share. Go back to this. Yeah, it's, a, it's in my second house. So this, you know, I understand what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my, for the next month, because a new moon is, a new moon is for the month ahead and a full moon is for two weeks ahead. So I'm going to do a new share back to this because I'm going to show you when Pluto, it's quite exciting. And um, the last time, Pluto entered Aquarius was in 1777, which is a long time ago, huh? 200 and, in fact, let's work it out. Calculator 2023 minus 1777, 246 years ago. But when it goes in, I think it's going to go in, we can actually look. Let's see where I'm at. So we've got here we have 22nd of January, spotlight. So we go, I'm going to go weeks because if I go days, it'll take forever. So 28 degrees, one, two, three. There you go. So if we go days, I'm showing you Pluto moving into Aquarius. And the last time it did that was 246 years ago so in 1776 where Pluto is at now um was where 27 degrees was the formation of the USA 27 degrees Capricorn so USA is having its Pluto return but that Pluto will go retrograde again so that's days so that's zero degrees okay that's the 23rd of March 2023 and then you can see there that when that happens, Saturn will be in Aquarius, sorry, Pisces. I'm going to go back on that there. I'm going back on Saturn. So Saturn moves in on the 7th of March. We've got some huge movement going on here. And then you'll see that 
the north node will be ed edging on into Aries, which is pioneers, but also impulsiveness, Mars. So, you know, but it is pioneer and warrior, Aries, beginnings. So if I now go weeks, and this is the 7th of March, and I've already shown you that when Pluto's moving into Aquarius. But we're going to go forward because there you go. So this is what I'm going to show you. See, watch this. And I'm not giving you the exact day, but this is within a week. So this is the 2nd of May. It goes retrograde. I'm not saying it goes retrograde on the 2nd of May, but it goes retrograde. Then it goes, we're going ahead by weeks. Then it will move back into June. It will move back into the sign of Capricorn. And it will go back to probably, there you go. This is where the formation of the United States was the 4th of July, 1776. It was 27 degrees. So it's interesting to see what's going on in the world. And that's September 2020. Three there, September twenty twenty three. Then it goes then it goes back into the sign of Aquarius again. So that's it. I'm going to leave it there for today. I, I hope I haven't missed anything. But enjoy the new moon, and you know, be an observer. It's a good time to observe and to take care of ourselves as well. That's what the Saturn. If we look one last look, twenty first of January. 2023, 2023, there you go, that's just where we're at, so, and Mercury will be moving into Aquarius, and then we'll have Venus in Pisces, which is quite beautiful, Saturn in Pisces is a whole nother video, and I'm looking forward to that Uranian energy going direct, which is there you go. That's the 28. That's a week away. Let's go days. Two, three. 21st, 22, 21. 22, station. Station. And then direct. So that's it. I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching.